Okay, what's up guys, Dr. M3 here with a new video in the series, Help Me Find My New Daily Driver. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, turn notification on, so you'll get an update whenever I post these videos. But, having said that, the new card today in the series is this one behind me. This is the Porsche Taycan 4S. This is the base model. Uh, and we're gonna take a ride to see if this, in fact, is my new daily driver. Go ahead and click the notification above and the cards above to see the other cars I've reviewed in the series so far. So, we've got Porsche's entry into the EV market in this car. Now, I saw this car back as it was introduced in Geneva a few years ago, the concept Actually, it was uh, also shown at Pebble Beach in the Mission E. And although this car is not exactly like the, per, like the concept, it looks pretty damn close. And actually, I think the lines on this is pretty neat. So we're gonna take it for a drive. I have my buddy, Danny, who is in the car. You've seen him in a couple of other videos, who is gonna help me decide if this is the right car for us. So why don't we go ahead and take a quick peek? All right, guys, so we just, uh we're now sitting in the Porsche Taycan 4S. Um, we've got my uh, buddy, Danny, who you've seen in a couple of the other videos. The electric videos. It, the electric videos. <laughs> um, and we're gonna talk to you a bit about this Taycan 4S. This is sort of the base model of the Taycan series. Now, we, Danny and I are both novices with respect to this car. I don't so know anything about this car. We don't know very much about the car. We had to pull up the spec sheet after we picked it up. After we picked the car up. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, because for me, this is about helping us decide if this is the next daily driver. And a part of it is how it performs and how it makes you feel, right? At the end of the day is, does right, it right. fit what you're trying to to, to do. Right. Now, a couple of things that we noticed immediately when we stepped into this car was, of course, it's a Porsche, so it does immediately have a premium feel to it, Correct. right? Yes, yes, yes. It also has, it's a more of a conventional setup too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it looks, it's got, you know, a conventional sort of dashboard um with a conventional screen shut mm -hmm. up it's got a lot of tech here um that you can see um you know like you know recuperation it has stuff about the set how you can set up the chassis just the typical things that you would see and the layout is very familiar right. for a, a porsche mm -hmm. but um so when you stepped in, what, are, what were your first impressions? Because again, that's something that immediately jumps out at you. So first impressions I think, stepping into the Porsche Taycan. I think you immediately feel that it's some more, if I'm gonna compare this to a Tesla, I think it's just a more premium product immediately off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, there's certain cars when you like sit in them and you close the doors, you can see how quiet they are and how there's no, we'll say, Hmm. Like exterior road noise. It's just like a super quiet, dense feeling car on the inside. And I yeah. think that has a lot to do with the materials they chose. Yeah. Um, so I think that immediately off the bat just kind of tells you it's a more premium fit and finish yeah. and more luxurious car, if you will. Yeah, they've been at this for a while and right. they know how to build a premium car. Now, uh, you've not had a chance to drive this yet. We're going to get mm -hmm. you behind the wheel in a few minutes. But what else, did, what is the other thing that's very obvious almost instantly? We're, we're, where we are is in Pittsburgh. <laughs> the roads aren't super smooth like, right. you know, like Scottsdale or places yeah. in California. Yes. These roads are infamously terrible. They're bad. They're bad. Yes. Uh, right off the bat, you can tell that the dampening and the suspension is just way more sophisticated than you know, 99% of the other cars out there. Yeah. It handles bumps and uneven surfaces extremely well. Um, and that, honestly, that also might have to do, this has, this one has snow tires on it. This also has snow tires, so yeah. That does help with 
yes. you know, bumps and it, they're just, yeah. a, it's just it's a bigger rubber. tire. It's, it's softer a bigger rubber. Tire. It's bigger. Mm -hmm. It's more compliant. Right. But compared to a Tesla, it's a lot better. <laughs> it's, it's a world. Of I, mean, I don't think it's a fair thing to even compare it to a Tesla no, because no. the suspension on a Tesla is on we've seen it on the model three on the y at, at least on the three and the y it feel it does not it's not good it's not good and and again though i did drive the x and the x has the air suspension, air suspension. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was definitely more premium more compliant but mm -hmm. i have to say that on on this car it is it's buttery smooth it is it is, it is. i love the the sound that you hear too it's very futuristic yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, comparing it to a Tesla, this does have sound, and I don't know how to really explain it. It yeah. sounds like I, I don't even know. You know, what I mean? yeah. because like I don't know what an electric <laughs> engine sounds like. Sounds so you're like. not supposed to be able to hear one. Yeah. So there is some sound, and it's not from the tires. It is from, you know, the other electrical components. I think maybe the electric motors are making yeah. some sounds, but yeah. it's definitely more noisier than a Tesla, because the Tesla does have some sound, but you have to really like. Yes. get on it you once you get, get on, on it it's like a high-pitched squeal exactly but this even at like a little bit of throttle input right it, <laughs> it, it makes noise yeah. yeah now i think they also i mean obviously some noise here is artificial because mm -hmm. for pedestrians and stuff outside mm -hmm. and, but that there's that electric whine yeah, yeah yeah that is what is a part of uh -huh. the the sound and ambiance i guess yeah of yeah. what this is now, And just like that, we swapped. We swapped. This is spacious, man. It is very spacious. Also, this seating position is way more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's way more sport. I mean, it's, it's sport exactly. Yeah, it feels like you're in a sport exactly. car. Exactly. So one of the things that's very obvious is that you're in more of a sports EV, right? For it gets sure, you get sure, that yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. um, so. And it's pretty obvious that the, the surfaces are all premium. Mm -hmm. We kind of like, I very much like the layout. Yeah. Um, you have that main screen in front of you. Again, you have sort of your conventional controls and mm -hmm. then you have your HVAC uh, section here in the middle. Oh, perfect steering wheel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're in a race car, so exactly you're setting it up, man. All right, so Let's we're off. We're off. Wow, the steering is definitely immediately different from a Tesla. <laughs> Did you notice that right yeah, away too? Right, yeah, yeah. remember what I was saying? Even that, without having to turn very yeah, much. Yeah, just instantly. It's more direct. It feels... Yeah, it's better input. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's more to it. So, obviously, steering, suspension, um, no question about the fit and finish. The brakes are nice. The brakes nice. are nice. The, the brakes don't, are, it's not a, not the same regenerative braking. That's right. As yeah. you have on the Tesla. You have to use the brakes. You it have feels to like use, you the use the brakes like a yeah. normal combustion yeah. car. So not one, no one, one pedal driving yeah. in this, in this case. I'm okay with that. No, I'm not. I do. No. <laughs> I'll, take I'll take it back. That was like one of my favorite things in the Tesla is that you just basically just drive all the just time right. with one brake. Exactly. Exactly. Now the other thing this car apparently doesn't have either, obviously, uh -huh. and it's it's one of the value adds, and you know Tesla is just way ahead of everyone. Mm -hmm. Is obviously some of the autonomous features, right? right that's true. Uh, including you know autopilot. This does not um, have that. Right? This this does this probably has lane keeping assistance and all that sort of stuff on the highway, uh -huh. but it doesn't have auto steer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any of any of those things. So that's one of the things that you, you know, for some people, they don't care. In a car like this, they may want to drive all the time. Right. And again, it depends on the, the purpose. For my purposes, as, as, oh, <laughs> lifted F-150. For a minute, I thought it was a Raptor. Um, but what you're looking for, and see what happens? We're sitting in an EV, talking about an EV, a sports EV, and a combustion, yeah. you know, big-ass F-150. And what do we do as car guys? We stop, we look and go, oh my God. That's how it is, guys. So this is, oh, it is, and the accelerate, and there's no hesitation there, yeah. right? Steering is good, um, fit and finish, suspension's good. I, I don't, can you I don't, make a left here? I like this. Uh, I can't make a, I'll make a left here. Hi, yo. 
we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah, yeah, we can make it left here. For kinda, sure. The problem is it's so hard to see. You are clear on my side There's and no you're clear on your side. Yeah, there you go. Sue me. All right. <laughs> Let's get a little acceleration here. It's fast, dude. Yeah. It's the, and again, this is, this is, what is this? 428? Yeah, it's like 420 some horsepower. Four, I think it's 428 horsepower. We do have the spec sheet, guys. <laughs> so this is, um, where is it on here? This is the 4S. This is the 4S. This way. is the 4S. So it's 93.4 kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. And it's about 4,000 plus pounds. 4,700 pounds? Yes, 4,700 pounds, yep. 016, um, 3.8 with launch control. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. So this also has, so the base price of the Taycan 4S is 103,800, yeah. right, so right, right, $104,000. Right, right. And, um, you know, options uh, that go from there. So um, pretty interesting, 69 MPGE, which, you know, yeah. you know, whatever. The range on this, I think we heard was um what was it 300 and something miles no it was like high two like high, high 200, 200 high yeah 200s, high 200 yeah. yeah which i think is really good which is actually really good again it you know and with the these uh charging systems more and more of them mm -hmm. uh around the country uh it's not bad again coming back to my use case uh -huh. you know 150 miles a day so about yeah. 650 750 miles a week mm -hmm. Um, that sort of infrastructure is going to be important. So these don't have like fast charging options, do they? They, th no, they do actually. Oh, okay. So there's a faster charging. And the thing about it is in like in Europe, they have a few places where there is a, the supercharging is, mm -hmm. I don't remember the high level. That's okay, really, okay. really mm -hmm. fast. Um, that infrastructure is not as developed in the U S yet. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but again those are the sort of things we have to sort of think think about yeah. you couldn't you go use a tesla supercharger for instance right for right right yeah you'd have to use the, the regular you know like infrastructure yeah. exactly mm -hmm. yeah like charge point or one yep. of those things mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean Th yeah i mean this is a completely different white ride quality from the tesla <laughs> yeah and again now let me ask you this question do yeah. you think would anyone would people cross shop Maybe the people who are doing the Model S, but even then, I think people who do the Model S maybe value the technology that comes with purchasing a Tesla rather than just the, you know, having an electric car. I think they want like the supercharger stations. I think that's important to a lot of people. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I think the only people who might cross shop are the Model S owners. And what's the base price on a Model S? Um, the brace price on a Model S, I think, are in the mid fifties or something okay. like fifties, sixties. Mm -hmm. And what's and the go, what's like the highest spec Model S? Oh, I can go take a look. I think that Model S is you know over a hundred. Right, uh, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, that's that would put it into this. Category. That's what I'm saying. So maybe like that buyer who's like completely specking out a Model S, but then again, like I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. I don't think so. I think that's a. I think it's a completely different buyer. Um, but like I said, maybe the person who's completely specking on a Model S might look at a, the, you know, Taycan 4S, maybe. Yeah. Unlikely. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, that's uh, our initial impressions yep. on the Taycan 4S. To, I think yeah. it's... To be it? clear, I think Tesla and Taycan have very little overlap other than they're both electric cars. Yeah, unless you take the highest trim. Right. And we have not seen it yet. Correct. Um, I don't think you cross shop these nope. cars at all. Nope. I think, you know, there's so many things from suspension um, to steering to fit and finish. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Performance, they're very different cars, but you still, they're, they're both EVs. So you're right. kind of thinking about how they fit in. Yep. And that's the reason why, frankly, we're, we're here. Mm -hmm. Now this car, we have courtesy of Porsche Pittsburgh. Um, and if you're interested in this or other Porsches, go check out Ask for Joe. Great guy. They'll, they'll take great care of you. Tell them Doc sent you. Um, and again, I, I, what I got to say, this is, this is, this belongs on the list. Yeah. Um, I've got, the, I've got some things to think about now. Yeah. That's for sure. 
So guys, if you enjoy this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit uh, subscription, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and turn notification on. Otherwise, we'll see you again in the next video as I keep hunting for my next daily driver. Danny's gonna give us a little bit of acceleration here. Oh, God, this is good. <laughs> well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. As you always say, peace. I say keep motoring. <laughs> keep motoring. This is Blinded a weird, by the red light. This is a weird light, too. Is this is always weird. Yeah, I think, it, I think it is. Cause, uh, it, so this is like, oh, they're very different cars. Yeah. Cause like, I think the technology in the Tesla makes sense for a lot of people who, like what you're about to do, like mm -hmm. this whole like, yeah. yeah.